Let's talk about DeSantis. You know, uh, you you have come out in favor of DeSantis. You had a uh, a, a video op-ed, or, or you know, on your YouTube channel that said something like, you know, three reasons I'm in favor of Ron DeSantis, things like that. What is the case, you know, succinctly, because we're going to talk about this for an hour, uh, but sure. let's lay out the thesis statement. Ron DeSantis for libertarians. Like, why should libertarians who are going to have some, you know, kind of reservations about some of the stuff he does, uh, you know, and not simply eating pudding with his fingers. Um, what's the case for Ron DeSantis to libertarians? Well, first off, I mean, the guy was part of the Freedom Caucus when he was in Congress with a bunch of other guys that libertarians seem to like. Uh, he is the most, I would say, limited government, but uses government when it should be used, uh, politician that we have probably in America, certainly now at a national level. Uh, you know, Florida, I mean, we can do a couple like just basic libertarian things here. Florida is a no income tax state. That is great for libertarians. Uh, Florida, we have we have the rule of law. Now, I think we probably have some little disagreements maybe on mm -hmm. levels of policing or that sort of thing. Uh, but libertarians want to protect life and want to protect property. That's being done incredibly well uh, here in Florida. Actually, Zach, you, you mentioned right before we started, you live in one of the few places that's Democrat run now in Florida. Florida, which is almost all red now. Don't forget, DeSantis won his first election in 2018 yep. by 30,000 votes to a guy who turned out to be a meth addict. He won his reelection by 1.6 million votes. It's basically the biggest landslide in Florida history. He turned what was at one time a blue state, then a purple state into basically the most red state in the country. And from what I've seen, he's really only using government when it's effective. And uh, because I know libertarians don't like red tape and don't like regulation, we had that unbelievably horrific, it's less than a year ago, basically category five hurricane Ian hit Southwest Florida. The rebuild there has been so unbelievably fast because he went in, cut all the red tape and they have rebuilt. I mean, I've been there, it's on the other coast, I'm here in Miami, but that Sanibel bridge, it's a three mile bridge. It would have taken any other state two years to rebuild that thing. They, they had it functional in about three weeks. That's just one little example of the type of things that he's done. He doesn't believe in government. And then we could do all the COVID stuff. I mean, right. he opened up the state. He made sure the kids were going back to schools. He was fighting against masks. He, you know, he's also trying to get ESG out of all of our government institutions. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could we could go on and on. The uh, don't say gay law or the parental rights. And, you know, I think it's it, this is something that um, I think libertarians need to uh, kind of grapple with more fully, which is that. Ron DeSantis signed what is, you know, either the leading or certainly one of the best school choice bills uh, in the state, uh, in the country. Yeah. Uh, but then he does this and he did this with masks. He did this with other things where he's saying in order to preclude certain choices, I'm going to say at the state level, local school districts, local businesses can't make certain types of choices. And for me, that's worrying because what I see as somebody as he gains more power is going to start uh, to exert his personal choices or a conservative ideological agenda on more and more aspects of everyday life. Right. If he so had can just you, said, can you just, can you just can, give me can, an example of what you're talking about? Because I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what I'm saying is, is that if you want school choice and if you believe in parental rights, sure. you should give money to parents and they can send their school, their kids to whatever, whatever schools they want, public or private. But then if you start to say, okay, and also, by the way, schools cannot teach this, schools cannot do this, schools cannot X, Y, Z, that's confusing to me. Um, yeah. And it strikes me as maybe that's the difference between being conservative and being libertarian, but I find it worrying. Well, I, well, first off, as long as the government has anything to do with education, then somebody has no, to they're decide- gonna fund no, right. actually, they don't really. But no, no, no. Uh, I get the libertarian yeah. position on this. I, I could get there. I'm all for school choice. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do, you know, what's happening right now, and it's largely in part because of Florida's blueprint, but it's happening in Iowa and Arkansas mm -hmm. and uh, Montana and several other yeah. states is funding of students as opposed to right. systems. Absolutely. I think we're probably in agreement that that's the best totally. way to do it. Totally. If you think that there should be any funding tax related yeah. whatsoever. Now, I, I don't have a problem. Yeah, I don't have a problem. I, I am a, a, a squishy libertarian. But, I, okay, I so, so, so in that regard, so if we're roughly agreed on that, well, then the question is, okay, so if you're saying you're going to have some level of public education, 
Somebody has to decide what's in that curriculum. Now, right. the fact is, the, and the I quote, would think that local schools would do that. Local school districts, local schools, sure, and so, parents. Then, I mean, why why is the state getting involved in saying you can't have this kind of curriculum? You can't have that kind of curriculum. Well, first off, that's not that's actually not what's happening. I mean, the, when people talk about these book bannings, all they've done no. is kicked it back to the districts to say, are you OK with certain books in your school? I think if you actually give parents the right uh, and the ability to choose their schools, you know, this stuff takes care of itself. But then to say, OK, any uh, any discussion of sexual orientation uh, or of gender identity in grades K through 12 or K through eight or at higher ed to try and squeeze out whatever it passes for critical race theory, these are troubling to me. That's, and I'm saying this from a libertarian perspective. I don't expect conservatives to agree, and I don't necessarily expect uh, liberals or progressives to agree. But this is what is, I think this is the nut that if DeSantis wants the libertarian vote, this is what he has to figure yeah, out. Yeah, and it's also yeah. just to return to the Disney example for a second, because you know what what happened there is that disney had that there's a basically privatized version of government running this area around disney and then disney came the disney ceo came out against this education law you can agree or disagree but that's his right as a private citizen and then they decided to take a special look at this and i interviewed the lawmaker behind this and he told me that you know there's all this pressure uh, for companies to go woke. So they're going to learn that in Florida, there's consequences for that. So they're out there making statements like this. DeSantis every day has been uh, making statements that Disney is just jotting down for their court case to show that it's retribution. Like anyone who's looking at the situation can see it's retribution. And it's not just for Disney. There's other companies. There's uh, Airbnb. He went after them because he didn't like that they pulled out of operation their operations out of the West Bank uh, in Israel. Uh, there's uh, the Stop Woke Act where they um, prescribed. They said that companies could not engage in certain types of diversity trainings. And you know we can have that debate about the public sphere and what's appropriate in public schools. But my problem is that. DeSantis often just erases that or just glosses over that public private distinction. And I find it disturbing for somebody who's being considered uh, to move up to the presidential level. Yeah, I, I, I truly mean this respectfully, guys. I hope it will come across that mm -hmm. way. But this is why libertarians don't make inroads politically, because I'm not saying that you're completely wrong on the, at the idea level, mm -hmm. philosophically, what you're saying. DeSantis fighting against diversity in our schools, you know, DI, diversity, equity, and yeah. inclusion, it's the most anti-American, actually anti-constitutional idea that you would be hiring, certainly that the government would be doing it, hiring based on sexuality and skin color and everything else. So if, the, it, because then otherwise it sends, it seems to me that maybe, and maybe this is true, Zach, perhaps you're more of an anarchist that they're real, that the government should sort of never do anything, you know, because, the, because otherwise, if the government never does anything, look again, I said this earlier, but look again what woke has accomplished just in the last five years. It has demolished basically everything. We have the Democrat Party is basically run by racists at this point and people who want reparations and all, all of this craziness. Finally, someone has come in and said, I'm going to do my best to clean this stuff up. Hey, thanks for watching an excerpt from our conversation with Dave Rubin. You can watch another excerpt from that conversation right here or the full conversation over here. And tune in every Thursday at 1 p.m. for more conversations like this.